Hola Data Geeks, thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk about the analytics pane. So this is a question as I just solicited questions from you guys uh, about the analytics pane and it comes from Sana Reddy and he asks specifically, let me pull it up, can you please explain the analytics pane in Tableau with some real world examples? So on my page here I have Tableau and this is Tableau version 10, I think 10.01, uh, but that shouldn't matter. And I'll just connect to some data here and kind of just walk you through this. This isn't totally scripted, so uh, I might flub a little bit, but forgive me and just kind of hang with me here. So in Tableau, you have essentially on the left side, the data pane when you first log in and connect to some data. In there, you have dimensions and measures. Dimensions, I like to think of as the uh, context of our analysis and the measures as the subject of our analysis. So if we're doing something like analyzing sales, and let me just double click sales to get a bar chart, and then double click say customer segment, you can see that I have the subject here is sales and the context is segment. So sales by segment is a common way that I would title something like this. So this is what I think of when I think of just the data I'm working with. There's also sets and parameters, and I could do separate videos on those later if you want, but for right now, that's the basic data pane. Now the analytics pane is how you do things that are a little bit more advanced. In fact, let me go ahead and close this out and build a very simple viz with sales and profit, and then I'll add customer name to detail. So let me swap that around, and what I have here essentially is the intersection of sales and profit for every customer. I could do it for say every order ID if I wanted to make it very detailed. Um, and you can see down on the bottom here, I have 5,000 marks being drawn, 5,000 individual dots, even though uh, it may not look like that much. So with this data here, I can go into the analytics pane and I can do more advanced things. This is fairly new. I think this was version nine when this came out, maybe version eight, but there wasn't much there to start. Now, each one of these are just different ways or different types of calculations or algorithms you can run on your data. So a good one here with this type of data would be clustering. And notice that some of them are grayed out. It's because I can't use those based on the data I currently have on my page. So a cluster is a new one in Tableau 10. And when I drag this on, you can see what happens here. It gives me this menu for create clusters. If I let go, it disappears. I can also do things like a trend line. And again, when I start to drag that onto my viz, I get different options. Now, Tableau is gonna try to be smart and it's gonna try to point me in the right direction, uh, but it may not always do it correctly. So for this one, let's do a cluster. If I drag cluster on, you're gonna see it actually took the two variables here, the sales and profit variables, which is what it's calling it. I typically would call those measures and it's created a number of clusters. And so what that means is there's some algorithms behind this that is explaining what's happening. And it's, it's actually grouping them using a clustering technique. So there's more details to that. And if you wanna look at clustering specifically, I can do a, another video detailing that or the help menu from Tableau will get you pointed in the right direction. But here's one case where the business case here would say, hey, I'm looking at all my orders. You know, Tell me the different groupings of them, the low, medium, high, et cetera. I can also adjust the number of clusters here. If I just wanted to say, show me the, the three different groups. And if I were to cluster these into three different things, where would they be and what would they be? So that's one use case for this. Now let me create a new sheet here and let me do something a little bit different with this time with order date. And I'll break this down to say week. So it's gonna be a lot of data. And then let's drag sales up. Then when I go over to analytics, I have different options here. Now, in fact, if I were to maybe roll this back up to say month, because there's a lot of data, I can use something like a box plot and notice how it does sell. This isn't gonna give me exactly what I want because it just treats it as one cell. But if I were to change this to discrete, I could then actually get, eh, it's not exactly what I want. This is, it would give me typically a box plot for every month. So maybe let's do quarter, let's see how that works. And the problem is that we're aggregating this. So sometimes you have to say analysis, uncheck aggregate measures, and let's do a box plot. And now you can kind of see what's going on. So 
The box plot kind of helps you get there. It doesn't always work, as you could see there. But what we're looking at now, essentially, are sales, all the individual sales for each quarter, and kind of the median of those, the top and the bottoms. So that's another type of analytics that you can run. Now, let's go back, in fact, to our first sheet here where we have our clusters, and we can use some trend lines here. So the trend line is one that will actually tell you kind of the intersection. It looks a little crazy here. Maybe let's get rid of our clusters and let's just drag segment on. So you can see that there. So what's happening here, and let me edit this because I do not like the, uh, the confidence bands. There you go. So the simple idea behind this is a trend line showing that as sales move from left to right, as the sales get larger, what happens to profit? We're doing very well, they're all going up. Sometimes you could look at this and you'd see them going down, which would mean if you were looking at it like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't have large sales in that category or something. In fact, I think this one will give us that. No, they might have changed that. Let's drill down to subcategory. Yeah, too much. Uh, actually here, replace, there we go. So. Anyways, that's a simple way to have a trend line. Now, trends also work with time series data. So let's go back and create another little viz with some time series data, because I think this is one of the more interesting types of data that you'll, that you'll use. So if I were to drill down to, let's say quarter again, I can go to analytics, and there's median with quartiles, which will do something like this. It'll show you kind of the median of the graph I'm looking at. And in fact, if I were to uh, select some of the data here, you can see how it adjusts. So if I were to say, hey, let's just look at these guys, you can see how the median and all that changes. So that's the median with quartiles. Let me remove that from the, from the viz by right-clicking and saying remove. And I think I need to remove the other lines as well. Remove, there we go, cool. Um, you can do an average, right? So this is pretty straightforward, or you can do a constant. So this would be say, hey, if I wanted to say, just show me a constant when it's above a certain number or at a certain point in time, go ahead and do that. So let's say I just wanted a line anytime that it's above 150,000. I can just pump that on there like that. So I can just kind of see a reference. Let me remove that one. Uh, the average with the 95% confidence interval, so this is an average and it'll create those confidence bands there that basically is saying, hey, you know, if you were to forecast this, forecast this out or look at the year previous, everything should be basically within this with a 95% uh, confidence interval. Let's get rid of that. And the one that I find actually most useful, and I've talked about this before, is how to use the forecast tool. So when I drag forecast on, it just one option there, and oh, weird, it didn't give it to me. Maybe I need more data here. Sometimes it doesn't like it when you don't have enough data points. Or I think it's actually giving me something weird with my viz. Let's try that again. Let's go back to go back to data, order date. Go down to month sales, analytics, forecast, there you go. Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't giving it to me before. I'll drag the legend over here so I can get full screen. So this is really cool and this is really useful because it gives me uh, a true forecast. And this is something that's, that's really powerful and I can even dig into the, the forecast. So when I look at this here, I can go to the forecast, I can say forecast options, I can ex, you know, specify exactly what I want, uh, whether or not I want to use seasonality or not, show prediction intervals or not, that kind of a thing. Um, and then I also can go back into the forecast and say describe forecast. So here's where I actually get the, uh, the seasonal effect, the change, you know, all, all the kind of details exactly behind all the models and all the metrics that were used to calculate it. So if you really, really want to get into the deep you know, sense of it, then that's, that's how you do that. Now, one of the interesting things about this is that I can actually select this data and then click on this little grid here and see what those estimates are. So I could you know, copy this, bring it into Excel, or even just paste it and create a separate data source 
which by the way, this is maybe a little hack that you may not know, is that when you've copied some data, you can just hit Command V or Control V on your Windows keyboard and paste that data, it creates a new data source for me. You see how I did that there? So now if I wanted to, you know, I essentially took the data from my, from my forecast model and then created a new data source just by doing copy paste. Uh, and then I could, you know, do whatever I want with this. I can calculate things. I can go back and forth. I can use it in this biz and all that kind of stuff. So let's see, what else did, do we need to cover in here? So we did talk about the basics, you know, the medians, the average, the box plots, which didn't work out how I wanted it to. Um, okay, and then reference lines, reference bands, distribution band, box plot. Okay, so we have those as well. So uh, let's duplicate this sheet and get rid of the forecast indicator. Oh, well, let's just get rid of that. Let's just change it to profit. How about that? So we're not messing with that variable. Uh, doesn't like my uh, not using an indicator there. Okay, cool. So there's profit. Good to go. Looks good. Let's go back to our analytics pane. Um, I can see a distribution band. So this is a common one where you'd want to see like 60, 80, or 100% of something. This is kind of the old way that we do things in Tableau where you'd have to kind of do this manually. Um, and so the idea here is that if you just wanted to see kind of bands of where things are at, you can do that with percentages or percentiles, uh, quantiles, and you can change the number of them and all that kind of stuff or standard deviation uh, is a good one. So. This is just different ways of adding reference bands to your viz. So you can kind of see that there and what that looks like. Um, and the analytics pane is just how you are able to do this kind of shortcutting a lot of the ways. Like I think a lot of these things with the exception of like forecasting and clustering and maybe a couple of the other ones, uh, a lot of folks like me used to do, but it just took a thousand steps and now it's just a, just a very simple one. Um, let's see what totals gives us here. All right, so you can do row grand totals. So there's like this new new guy here, which shows you what the total is. Probably wouldn't recommend doing that. It'll skew your results, but it's kind of a neat way to just add a total based on whatever you're looking at there. Cool, so thanks for the question and keep them coming. And hopefully this helped you understanding the analytics pane in Tableau. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. I really, really appreciate it. Now, I also have a blog, bensullins.com, in case you haven't visited that. On there, I have videos like this. I have code samples. I have full articles describing all the tips and tricks and everything that I want to share with you to help you in your career, as well as you can sign up for my weekly newsletter, which is basically a digest of all that, plus more stuff I found on the web that I found interesting that might be pertinent to you. So you can click this link here and go check that out. And again, I appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you back here soon.